YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's engraving here with another video and with internet again feels good to be back oh man and, and I appreciate y'all for being patient with the process yesterday because it was very very annoying for me it was very frustrating for me but again it's not the worst of the worst problem so it really is what it is but we're back now so anyway the Ravens they had a presser today um their second day of OTAs the first day that the media was able to watch those OTAs up close and personal um John Harbaugh spoke Adafi Away spoke Mark Andrews spoke and Marlon Humphrey spoke but I wanted to talk about Marlon Humphrey his part of the presser first because it, it was just different for me because with Marlon Humphrey it stood out uh just a lot of the things that he said and the way that he said them and it really looked like to me, in my personal opinion, that it sounded like Marlon Humphrey is embracing and accepting and really just going after being a, a more of a leader on this team. Um, now, we know M Marlon Humphrey is extremely outspoken. He And he started off rookie season. He was quiet. But now you know who Marlon Humphrey is. You can hear his voice. You don't even have to see the face. You will know exactly who that is talking. Um, but it seems like he's trying to sort of mature in a bit he's still gonna joke around and all that stuff but it seems like he's maturing a bit but let's let's get it to what he said so i can explain what i'm talking about and how i saw it anyway um uh, he started off saying that it felt good to be healthy uh especially after his season ended early i think it was in that steelers game where he came to a rap the first steelers game but anyway uh he said it's important for him to be back uh, at, L at ltas to get back in the swing of things uh, but he also said and this was the first thing that stood out to me he said um, they pay me a bunch of money, so it's kind of important to show up. Now, when he said that, it, it is true. They pay him a lot of money. Um, and he said it in a joking kind of way, but I, I do believe there was a level of seriousness behind that because the Ravens made such a significant investment into Marlon Humphrey. And when a team makes that significant investment into you, uh, even though it's not written on your contract, you know they expect you to be a leader. Because they're not making that investment to the other 53 or 54 players on the roster. They gave that to you. There's only a select few guys who teams give that to. Uh, so I think Marlon Humphrey, he, he realizes that and recognizes that and is like, okay, it's, it's, it's on me now. I need to step up. Even though I know this contract came a couple years ago. Um, but I, I just felt like this, this may be the year where he's like really, really embracing uh, more of a leadership role. But anyway... He said there's nothing better than practicing and training with the people that you're going to be playing with all year. And, yeah, that makes all the sense in the world. Um, he said that Marcus Peters will be there next week. So that's a good thing. Um, he talked about Marcus Chuck and Kyle Hamilton being very smart players and that allowing him to just go out there and play. Um, he said that uh, they had some letdowns in the secondary last year. He also brought up how they lost Jimmy Smith. Um, but they, they seem to be retooling. He likes what they did in the draft and free agency and whatnot. I mean, I wouldn't expect him to say, oh, I don't like what they did. But so, yeah. Anyway, he said uh, he's excited for the new defensive coordinator, Mike McDonald. Uh, he said he really likes the flexibility that his defense provides. Uh, and he said that they want to have it where any defensive back can play any position at any time. Uh, and what was funny, and this is just something on the side, I kept noticing him mention, mentioning Chuck Clark. On this part, uh, he mentioned Chuck Clark. He's like, okay, come, come on, Chuck Clark, come play corner. He used that as an example. And there were two other times where he mentioned Chuck Clark as well. So was it coincidence? We'll see. Uh, anyway, he talked about how the defense, they can change up looks uh, and really keep the defenses guessing. So they could show one thing, and it could be one thing that they normally come out in, and when they normally come out in that, they do that thing, but they could actually be doing something different to just really try to throw people off. Uh, hopefully the Ravens can do that on offense too. But anyway, uh, he said that he questioned it when they first asked him to play in the slot, but he said that it, it took him back to Alabama when he redshirted his freshman year, um, and he so he wasn't playing, but he thought about the opportunity that when he did play, that he would play whatever Alabama asked him to just because he really just appreciated the opportunity to get to play football. And he said he takes that same mindset and willingness with the Ravens. So when they ask him to do whatever, then he's willing to do whatever. And that's part of being a leader, too. That's part of being a leader, um, being willing to make the sacrifice for your team uh, in order so that they can have group success. And not necessarily focusing so much on your individual success, but focusing on team success. Um, he said on the play where he got hurt because somebody asked him what happened. He said he didn't even know. Uh, he said he just got hurt. Now, this question right here, 
because this this is when I saw a, a, a maturity level uh, from Marlon Humphrey. It could be a PR maturity too, but I really appreciate it because you know a lot of media people they'll ask questions and they'll ask them for a reason. They want to know. Sometimes they want to get a clip. Sometimes they want to get a sound bite, a headline, whatever. But somebody asks, does it resonate differently that Lamar isn't here? And, of course, that's been a, to a hot topic over the past couple of days. First it was, is Lamar going to show up? Then it was like, oh, Lamar hasn't shown up. Okay, he's, he wasn't there the first day. Is he there the second day? Nope, he's still not there. So he asks, does it resonate differently that, that Lamar isn't here? And he said that Lamar's been training a lot. Um, and this is where with Marlon Humphrey, if you watch that part of the presser, listen to the way he speaks. He doesn't just come out and boom, answer, boom, answer, boom, answer. He thought about it. He paused. And then he gave an answer. So he didn't just blurt out the first thing that he was about to say, because I'm sure he knows. He, he knows what people say about Lamar, everything that Lamar does. Lamar can't do anything without having some crazy headline attacking him or whatnot. But Marlon Humphrey, he was very careful with his words, and I really appreciated that. But he said that Lamar Jackson has been training a lot, and he said that they have a big attendance, and he knows Lamar will be there soon. So with the question, even though the, the reporter who asked it, he didn't necessarily pose it as a negative, but it, it is kind of a negative. But Marlon Humphrey took that. And he flipped it and he changed it to a positive. And he spoke about the positive, saying that they have a big attendance, saying that he knows that Lamar Jackson is going to be there soon. Uh, and he, he said if it was training camp, then it might be bad because training camp is when they really going at it. But he said as long as guys are working, no matter where they are, that's what's the key. So, again, he, he gave another positive, another positive, something that could easily be a negative conversation. He changed it to a positive. He even said he talked to Lamar and said that he's Lamar said he's going to be out there. Uh, he said anytime someone can get those reps and he was speaking about Tyler Huntley. Um, he said then it's a good thing for them. So I really, really appreciated that level of maturity uh, from Marlon Humphrey because it, it, it did. It seemed like it might have been a little bit of bait, but nothing crazy. But he ain't go for it. He ain't go for it. So shout out to him. Um, he said uh, he was asked if, if they want to prove to people that they are the best secondary in the league. And he said he'd love for them to prove that. Um, he said they, they got all the pieces to do it. They just got to execute. Um, somebody else brought up how 2020, uh, that was a big turnover year for, uh, for him. But then last year, 2021, it was a, it was a struggle uh, for the Ravens to create turnovers. And Marlon said uh, that turnovers, getting turnovers is what's in the forefront uh, of one of their biggest goals. And he said ever since the, uh, the 30 for 30 was announced about the, the 2000 Ravens, um, he said he realized just how great that defense was. Uh, and he said that group like really inspired him. Um, and then he talked about how he's excited to see uh, Patrick Queen take a big leap. Uh, he's excited to see Marcus Peters get back healthy. And he also talked about himself playing better. So again, another level, uh, another step forward in a level of maturity for Marlon Humphrey because he yeah he talked about himself but he also talked about positives that he's looking to see from his teammates too so he could have been like oh yeah I need to step up I need to do this better I need to do that better I, I want to take a big step forward and that would there would be nothing wrong with that but he brought up Patrick Queen but he brought up Marcus Peters um so I, I appreciated that uh he said that he even might end up walking in the cafeteria and knocking a lunch plate out of somebody's hand I would like to see him try that with Ben Cleveland and see what would happen. But anyway, um, he, he said that he's enjoyed doing Studio 44. Um, and with, with what he already knows about a lot of his teammates, he's able to learn even more about them. Uh, he said that Marcus Peters and Lamar, those are some guests that he wants to have on. Uh, and he said he wants to be in media after football. I think we could all see him doing that for sure. Um, and he said he wants to go back to playing really good football. He said he's never been a 10 interception guy, as we know. Uh, but he said he wants to get back to playing fundamentally sound. Uh, and he got sloppy with that last year as far as technique and stuff. Um, and then one last thing he talked about was with Mike McDonald. He said Mike McDonald has done a good job of explaining the why behind why he calls certain defenses in certain situations. Uh, and Marlon said it's been helping them all become smarter football players. So like knowing what the defensive line is going to do in this situation, knowing what the linebackers are going to do in that situation, knowing what the safety is going to do, knowing what everybody around you is going to do in different situations. And that can help you do your job better. And of course, first and foremost, you have to do your job first. That's the most important because you can't help somebody else do their job if you can't do your own. But 
like I said, I really appreciated uh, what Lamar Jack. I mean, excuse me, <laughs> not what Lamar Jack said, what Marlon Humphrey said, and the way that he said it. Because, like I said, it, it was a level of maturity. Um, I just, it just seemed like he's taking a jump forward uh, in my eyes. So I appreciated that. Um, Harbaugh, uh, he talked about Lamar. He said he'll let Lamar speak for himself on why he's not there. Uh, he said it was different having Cook out there as a coach instead of a player. Um, and he said the holding been going pretty smooth, so that's a good thing. Um, he said he's excited for the young wide receivers to get out there and says sometimes you just got to put guys out there. And he said the, the young wide receivers, they understand the situation. They better understand, too, that you, you know Ravens are going to sign somebody. They're going to bring some, some way, somehow, they're still going to bring somebody in. Who it is, no clue. Will it happen, though? Yes. I, I could almost guarantee it. It's just a, a matter of when now. But anyway, and, and uh, yeah, we'll get into that later. Um, he said with Chuck Clark that he didn't want to miss OTAs, and he said that Chuck Clark was running the defense, and he picked up where he left off at. Um, and as far as the padded helmets, because I've seen that question floating around a little bit too, those extra padded helmets. He said those are uh, just to protect against concussions. He said they have to wear them. He said you're going to see a lot of them for the first two weeks of training camp uh, where stuff gets ramped up, and he said especially in the front seven. As far as the offensive line and then the front seven, they're going to be having them on a lot. Um, so yeah, that, that was it from John Harbaugh Pretty simple, straightforward um, Mark Andrews He spoke after Harbaugh and He said it's great to be back Said this time of year You start to miss football a bit uh, And with, with these presses Again, they, they remind me of when The Ravens would do these during a the regular season um, He said uh, It's hard he, he was asked Is it hard to get done what you want to get done Without Lamar Jackson being there and he said, there's no worries. He said, they're getting ready for when Lamar Jackson comes back. Um, and they asked him, why do you come to OTAs? For what? And he said, because he loves it. He loves football, loves the Ravens organization. Uh, he talked about meeting and getting to know the new coaches and whatnot. So real good. And again, Mark Andrews, they're paying him a significant amount of money. And again, just to go back uh, to Marlon Humphrey, just because they're paying somebody a significant amount of money, um, or even if they weren't paying somebody a significant amount of, money, amount of money, it doesn't mean that if you're not being paid high dollars, then you can't be a leader. No. Mm -mm. But I think the expectations of leadership are, are raised when they are paying you a significant amount of money. No, but anyway, uh, he said that Kyle Hamilton is really long and rangy. Uh, he talked about Kyler and Likely said they're light years ahead of where he was when he was a rookie. Um, he said that uh, last year having a great season, it was an honor but that's not the end goal. Um, they asked him, how do you embrace the mentorship role? And he said that it's humbling for him to be a role model to somebody, that he'll do whatever he can to help the other tight ends. So no Ryan Tannehill over here or Joe Flacco. Or, uh, and again, it's, it's not necessarily like th those guys. It's, it's always funny. I, I like to joke about it. But um, with those guys, it's not, it's not their job to coach people. They're not coaches. They're players. It's their job to play. Um, but it's it's part of the business, man. It's, it's part of the business. You showing somebody the ropes, even if they're about to take your job. And that can be one of the toughest. When you really think about that, like, man, this person, they going to end up taking my job. Do I really want to help them? So but Mark Andrews, I don't think he's not in. Nobody's going to take his job. The Titans are a threat to take his job. Um, but the willingness to help out, uh, that's big because they see that. And they not only take it with them while they're on the Ravens, but if, when, if and when some of them go to another team, they can take that with them. And it could just create a much more positive environment for just everybody involved. Um, they, somebody asked, is it too early to have expectations similar to 2019? And he said, we have a lot of guys that can play. And he said he's been working with Boyle in Arizona this offseason. He said Nick Boyle is ready to go. So again, that leadership, he, he put it to Nick Boyle. He said Nick Boyle's ready to go. He, like, deflected the question off of attention on him, and he put it on one of his teammates and said, hey, he, he's ready. So that was cool. And then um, last but certainly not least, Adafi Away. Uh, Adafi Away said it's nice having his high school friend uh, as a teammate in the league, of course, uh, uh, Jabo. Uh, he said that his surgery in January, it went well, and he feels good, just taking it day by day. Um, now, he said as far as uh, what going into this season, since he's not a rookie anymore, um, he said the knowledge of things that he didn't know, it helps. Uh, and even knowing things that he didn't know, he didn't know. Uh, that helps, too. And he said it's much different this year just having that understanding of being a professional football player. 
Uh, he said he loves Mike McDonald already. He loves what he did with Ajabo. Um, but he said that Mike set the expectation for him as a player early. Um, he said Justin Houston taught him a lot last year, and he said that he wants to dominate more and finish. He wants to be there more for his team uh, and be, make more plays. He wants to be more aware. But then after he, after he said all that, he was like, oh, but I don't want to get specifics. So if he got more specific goals than that, oh, hey, okay. By all means, go for it, man. Um, he said that he writes down his goals so he can look at them every day, get reminders of them every day, and hopefully that hopefully he doesn't even just meet his goals. Hopefully he exceeds them by far, and hopefully this Raven team as a whole, they exceed their goals by far. Uh, but this was nice, getting to see a couple of the different guys talk uh, to the media. I'm not sure when the next media session is going to be, uh, but this was a cool little starter session. And again, I, I really appreciated just the uh, that leadership. The, the, the leadership from a Marlon Humphrey, the leadership from a uh, Mark Andrews and just them continuing to take steps forward. Uh, because, of course, you want them to continue to take steps forward on the field. But when they do it off the field, it makes them that much better. Team Keep It Clean, I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. And we out.